Um, well, we had a big one last week, a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Again, that today, very similar, I think, Steve. Um, we expected United to come in and be a, a lot tighter than they were. As we mentioned before, seven minutes, seven minutes in, they're already down 1-0. So from then on, they have to try, at least try, and come out and play and take the game to them. But quality-wise, it just wasn't good enough. We, we spoke to Owen about patterns of play as well, trying to play out from the back, trying to get through midfield to a forward player. There was nothing. Technically, they were poor on the ball. He gave the ball, ball away all the time. And it shows how far away they are when you then look at the other side, how comfortable they were in possession. The angles they make, Rodri, the angles they make, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, always in space, one, two touch, pass the ball. It was a, it was a massive golfing class, we know that, but does anything change? Do we, are we really surprised by United being short of City and Liverpool? I don't think they're massively short of Chelsea at all, I think they could go and beat teams like Chelsea. And I think just the same now is going to happen again. We'll struggle against the big teams, we might go on a run now, beat all the teams we expect to do, and then think we're a good team again. But realistically, you'll come straight back to this type of performance and the Liverpool performance. And in terms of those numbers and what Paul's saying, this is an incredible stat. 13 years they've been collating those stats that we use every week, and in that period in the Premier League, that is the lowest touches that Manchester United have ever had in an opposing team's penalty area. And you know they were what? at home. I mean, that's the biggest word. I mean, I, I, I said to Scholesy halfway through the first half, I said, they'll be happy with this at 1 0. And even in the second half, I said to him, they'll be happy with this at 2 0. And I think that's what it was, Steve. You know, it was almost like, we'll take this now. But the point is, you've got to have a go. You, you know, you've got to put some pressure on, get the bodies forward, get some crosses in the box, interchange, link. They've got so many unbelievable attacking players. Jane Sancho, Marcus Rashford, Cristiano Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes. Create. Boys got to get create and be brave this before the game this crowd was positive they they were very very optimistic that something could happen as Scolzi said once the goal went in it changed but they need to be able to do more I mean four touches in the opposition's box look it was 2-0 but it felt like it was more yeah. in, in the game and the thing is Liverpool were clinical that's why it was so high if it wasn't for David De Gea that probably would have been more yeah let's go back to the goals they, they can see because as Paul said from seven minutes in they were chasing the game and chasing shadows at times. Well, I'd say from seven seconds into the game, Steve, that they were chasing it because you know the way they sat, sat, uh, set up, they were just never going to be in the game. Um, Bay, I think he can possibly be. I mean, it's not really a that dangerous ball. It's coming into an area. You should be able, if your front screen you should be able to clear it. Um, but it was a great ball to start with from the right. You know they've gurgitated possession. Cancelo, very good off either foot. It's a decent enough ball, but by he should be clearing that with his right foot, slashing at it, miss kicking it. It's very, very poor. He's, slow, he's so slow to get himself back into position. He's actually strolling up to the halfway line. To get in position where he can just side foot it out. I thought one of the biggest problems in the game was Cancelo and the fact his attacking position. I mean, he got three assists in the Champions League midweek. Any chance somebody can come pick him up? I mean, how easy is it for the lad to get crosses in? And the problem was Bruno Fernandes had to come out and play there. But you don't want your number 10 tracking all the way back on the fullback. So they had so many issues. That's too easy at Old Trafford. How can you have that much time on the ball? Credit Bernardo Silva. That's smart. He's the one that thinks he feels that it's a yeah. good finish. That, that, that's what happens with this system, though, Steve. When you play against the five, five at the back, Foden and Jesus pin them back. Then the opposition fullbacks, Cancelo and Walker today, they control the game because there's nobody, nobody can get out to him. If McTominay or Fred try and get out to him, they just pop it into midfield. And them two players were absolutely brilliant on the ball today. They were almost like central midfield players, and they controlled the game from them areas. And it'll be no surprise to hear that Kinsella and Walker had the most touches of the ball in this game. Those Manchester City fans in full voice away to our left-hand side. One of those fans is one of their players, of course. He will have enjoyed this so much at Old Trafford. His players, of course, he will have enjoyed this so much at Old Trafford. His players, of course, he will have enjoyed this so much at Old Trafford. Here's Phil Foden. You haven't beaten your City rivals in the last four games. Does it make it even sweeter? to put in such a dominant performance to take all three points? Yeah, I think we had um, the game of our lives today. Um, everything just went right. Um, a lot of possession, a lot of chances. And yeah, we dominated from start to finish, which is um, obviously really good. There was so much of it, but for you, what went right the most? 
Um, the possession and picking the right times um, when to hurt them and the space in behind. So, yeah, really pleased. How integral to the plan as well was the pinning back of their wing backs as well, which you were involved in? Yeah, you know, me and Gabby had just got told to try and press the, the full backs because obviously it's difficult when they play five at the back. And then we had Kevin Bernardo um, pressing as well, and it, yeah, it worked. Tactically perfect, Phil Foden says today. They were very good. I mean, very rarely are they not tactically perfect. Let's get it right. Uh, Pep well, they Guardiola, weren't last week against Crystal Palace, were they? No, but Pep Guardiola is a, is a, is a tactical genius. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's got all the best players, but he, you know, Manchester United have collected a fantastic array of players, but you know, they don't look like a, a, a team, uh, whereas Pep Guardiola, whatever team he manages, they've got a distinct style of play. Um, and I think that's what you look for in a, in a manager, in a coaching team, is, is to put your impression, your impression. I was just about to team. say, so if you're Manchester United manager today, that's not a surprise to you, what City did. No, City have been doing that for years. But what so? is a surprise? You turn up and you, and you see Manchester United and you don't know what formation they're going to play. You don't, they're collecting a load and load of players, all these great players from around the world. And they shouldn't they're going to play. They're chopping and changing all the time. I mean, you've got to have a vision. You've got to be able to see further than the end of your nose and think, right, this is the way we're going to play. No matter what, we're going to buy players for these positions. Right. And now let's go and play that position. If things go wrong, if you concede five against Liverpool, you don't think, ah, right, the defence is rubbish, let's just go and put one more player in there. It's, it's ridiculous. And I, I'll go back to what Jurgen Klopp did at Liverpool, and he's the best exponent at it. He came in and said, this is how we're going to play. Our full-backs are going to bomb forward. We're going to have a sit in midfield. We're going to play three up front. And do you know what? We'll go 3-0 up, and then they used to concede three all the time. And what did he did he think? Oh, we're conceding all the time. Let's put more. Def no, he didn't. It's the best thing in the world because it weeds out the weak. The poor players get weeded out because they get exposed in a formation. All Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does, as soon as there's a weak player, ah, let's cover for him. Let's put even more defensive. And what, in the meantime, you're buying millions of millions, hundreds of millions of pounds worth of players. It's like you don't do that. Weed out the week. If you're not good enough, go and get someone else. But in the meantime, go through the pain barrier because this is how we're going to play. This is how we're going to play, no matter what. So what they're, all they're doing at the minute is just covering for weaknesses and looking at the next week. Oh, good team, let's just play loads of defenders. Oh, bad team, let's play loads of attackers. It's rubbish. It's, it's, it, that's not how you, how you go about attackers. It's rubbish. It's, it's, it, that's not how you, how you go about things. You have to have a long-term plan. At the minute, Manchester United going one one Wednesday to the next Saturday, just step by step. They're a bit good, oh, let's panic, let's play loads of... It's, it, that's not how you do it. You've got to have a long-term plan. Weed out the rubbish, if that's the case. You know, but you've got to go through a bit of pain on the way because Man United on, you know, mid-table Premier League team, if, they're, if their target is, is the top of the... to win the league, then that's how they've got to do it. They're not going to do it by just us lot sitting here and thinking, do you know what? He's going to play defensive again today because he's playing against a better team. Talking about Man United here, I can't, I can't stand there and, and we all agreed that that's what was going to happen, but I, I, I can't accept that that's the right thing that's going to happen. Yeah, I know what Michael's saying. It, it, they asked a conviction has to come from your coach of a way you're going to play football. Oli's been here three years now and we're coming today not really knowing what he's going to do, as Michael said. And again, that ruins everything, that, that, that makes the recruitment almost impossible because you're not playing, buying players for a system. You look at Pep, he buy players for his system. He brought Grealish in this year for his system. Mares in for his system. Jurgen Klopp brings Jota as another forward in for his system. We're bringing players in and trying to shoehorn them into positions. Just the next great player we'll bring him yeah. in, isn't it? He's, he's the most expensive player. He's the next one who's mentioned in the papers all the time. We'll bring him in, he must, he must be brilliant. Oh, wait a minute, where's he going to play? How are we going to play? And three years down the line, that's... Well, you've seen on the picture, you've seen the evidence on the picture, haven't you, today and two weeks ago. We're, we're a long way off. As Michael said, I do think we've got a group of good players, but they now are, all he has to convince himself, not himself, he, well, he has to convince everyone that he's the right man to find the right formation for this team. Stop messing about changing it for everybody else as we keep on doing. If something's not right, we'll change it. We'll, we'll cover for him, as, as Michael said. He's got to now have a conviction. Look, it's 4-2-3-1. It's 4-3-3. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is. Yeah. Have that conviction 
that suit the players that are in the team. Actually, we actually said before the game, the 3 5 it doesn't really suit the players of the team. Wamba Zaka, useless on the ball at right back. Not, not, brilliant defender, useless on the ball at right back. Three centre halves, none of them are that good on the ball. Two centre half, none of them are that good on the ball. They have got to find a way, Oli's got to find a way, the best system, and it's his job, by the way, he gets paid well to do this, to find the best system for this team, the best way of playing with the best players in them positions. And I think there's a squad of players there that could be OK. OK, it's yeah. We'll, we'll just pause on United. That's eight home defeats in uh, this calendar year for Manchester United, incidentally. Let's get some City reaction again. Here's Pep Guardiola. But understandably delighted Phil Foden. He felt that your teams they played the game of their lives what would you say said at the end he i don't think he can believe how comfortable that was for a for a derby but you want to go back to your original point sorry we had to no, we had to no, stop you in full no, flow for Pep no, Guardiola. I, was just, I was listening to scores with, with with interest and i just think that at the minute manchester united are being managed as if they're you know a mid-table team in a way firefighting all the time like a new team will come to town and they'll change their their way of playing and and, and to suit them and i just don't think that that's if, if that's the if that's the the game plan is just to be in and around the top four and you know Europa League places and fine but it's it's not you ask any fan you ask any ex player they all want to win the league they strive for, for to be the best and if you're going to be the best you have to have a go through a bit of pain along the way and that's okay Man City coming to town don't matter this is the way we're going to play and you know what we might get beat three or four nil. But that's going to just highlight where we need to improve, and that's the only way you progress. Not by disbanding everything that you've just invested in, trained for, everything else. Disband all that because a good team are coming to town, and now we're just going to, you know, forget about Sancho. We've just spent 70, 60 million on or whatever. Forget about the next player, all these great players. No, you've, you've bought these players for a reason. Go and play them in the best positions, in the right formation, and then might as i say might go through a bit of pain along the way but you'll get there eventually because this squad by the way steve is not that much worse than the other top three the player for player they've got some incredible players but they're miles off it because the way it's being run where do you stand on this yeah i think they got a lot of issues you know i think in terms of defensive they've gone poor all of a sudden which was one of the strongest points last season there's no patterns of play in possession so then the players look up and there's nobody to hit can't get out. If you watch all the top teams play, you know where the ball's going to go before it even goes there. Every time it goes pop, 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 pop. You watch the City players, we were saw them from the side today. They all sit in little pockets of space where they know it's their space. So if the ball goes there, somebody's in there. For United, they're always just reacting. And you know how the top teams are going to play. The boys are right. You know, the, the formation pretty much doesn't change depending on the personnel. And I think for United, you know, every time you come here, it could be a different shape, different formation. 